Welcome to a special edition of the Under the Sisterhood podcast, Women Making History during Women's History Month. We will celebrate six women and focus our conversations on each woman's life-changing contributions. This is a podcast to celebrate women and all that they do in our world. I'm Elizabeth Elfenbein. Let's get under the hood. Today, we're celebrating women making history with the inspiring Zarifa Ghaffari, a mother, daughter, sister, women's advocate, human rights activist, author, Netflix documentarian, and the former mayor of Maiden Shahir in Afghanistan. Zarifa was one of the few Afghan female mayors, also the youngest to be appointed at the age of 24. She is known for her efforts to advance women's rights in Afghanistan. Zarifa was chosen as an International Woman of Courage in 2020 by the U.S. Secretary of State and received the 2022 International Women's Rights Award at the United Nations Geneva Summit. She was included by the BBC in the list of 100 inspiring and influential women from around the world in 2019, and she was included in the Badass 50 list. In 2020, she received the award Women Who Can Change the World by InStyle. Her book, Zarifa, A Woman's Battle in a Man's World, is a poignant memoir and the inspiration for her Netflix documentary, In Her Hands. Following the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan's government in mid-August 2022, Zarifa fled with her husband, mother, and five sisters. The German government granted her asylum and she is now resides in Germany. Welcome, Zarifa. You are extraordinary in your fight for women's rights, and we are so thrilled to be celebrating you as a woman making history. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm I'm also thrilled by being here and speaking to you and everyone who in future will listen and look at this interview. The question I have for you, Zarifa, and of course, having read your book, having watched your documentary, I feel very close to your story, but I would love for you to share with the audience around the world was when was that spark? What was that inflection moment in your life that got you on this journey? If if I look back into my life, since seven, eight years old child, I remember the thoughts or maybe the the feeling of of maybe somehow I, I want to change it. I want to change something somehow for myself. At eight years old of life, I I was responsible as a woman, uh, elderly woman, uh, responsible for six, seven children, house, housekeeping, cleaning, dressing, washing, cooking, everything all together. By that, what I was responsible to, it was my own education. It was my own life as well. And the same time, the education of my sibling. So, you know... Looking at that kind of childhood, then I believe everyone will wish, you know, every second of that kind of life to change it. You know, in a ch- as a child, maybe it was just a childish thing to, you know, uh, to just be able to play, you know. But then if you grow up step by step as a teenager, then I had this dream of at least being able to complete my school. And then later on to do my university. And then at the university, you know, dreaming about learning about whatever is happening globally. And then learning about this is not only Zarifa who have been through this kind of life. Women are already suffering in in, in West, in, 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 in US, in UK, in Canada, in every corner of the world. There are still women being prized just because of their gender. There have been so many incidents, especially one uh, when I was in university, there was a woman being beaten up in public, Farfanda, uh, and then killed and was born in public, you know, and then that was a moment I felt like, you know, I need to do something concrete. And then I started working on having my organization in Afghanistan and I got the license and I started working on ground. And then I started my radio station, Pirla FM. But to have that kind of responsibility, I want to go back to your childhood and to say at seven and eight years old, the responsibility of taking care of the family, the household, all of those dynamics that did kind of build you into the strong change agent and human rights activist that you are today. So I would love for you to share 
those moments of when that change started happening? I I feel uh, most importantly, I feel like uh, now is not that right time to break out the realities of the dark realities of my life for now. But but I sometimes my husband also tells me how important it is to reveal these realities because at least someone someone will break that taboo, will break something, you know, uh, and will speak about those dark realities of Afghan woman's life, which no one speaks about it. But still, I feel like it's important because there are many women, they, they are suffering the same. And those women are unspeakable. They are, they are not having the platform to talk about it. And they, they don't dare. They are afraid of speaking that fox. So I feel like, you know, I need to do this, to okay. break that taboo and tell everyone what we have been through. It's not just now suffering you know it's not just taliban or daesh or all these terrorist groups who are oppressing us but our life difficulty starts from that day we are born in afghan community and i feel like it's not just afghan community it is so many more communities around the world. We are having problems in India. We are having in Pakistan, in Asian countries. We are still having these issues in in in, in, in Europe. We are still facing those those you you, you know women rights abuses in in Europe, in US, in UK, in US. We are still not despite that big slogan and and and, and big shout out of women's rights or human rights. It itself is something that is a problem. And uh, I know it's important to speak about the hardships uh, to our lives uh, about that, but I will do it, not now, maybe sometime in life, but I will fulfill this responsibility as well on that part. You, women have such broad shoulders, we carry so much. And so by you sharing any of your story, you are helping unburden other women who don't necessarily have the courage, you said it, that who don't have the platform to speak up, who identify with your experiences because they've been through the same thing, but there's no way for them to share that. You know, on your question about when was, you know, to decide to, to just, you know, break all the barriers and all the glass ceilings and come out. So I started uh, working as a teacher at a uh, private school. And from there, I started hiding from my uh, parents, hiding from my dad, going through, you know, to those small, you know, uh, opportunities that I had around. Then one day I, I got the opportunity of, of having the scholarship. And that scholarship was, you know, when I got that, I feel like doesn't matter what, I am not gonna, you know, uh, miss this so that was the moment I felt like you know I will stand for this and I did that I went home I talked to my mom and I told her it doesn't matter what I'm not gonna miss this chance so that was the moment you know it was decided and I called everyone and I said like okay I'm going and then I started working on that so after a few after one and a half, two months, I had a flight book to India and then I fly out to India. So uh, that was how, you know, that started and going to university, you know, experiencing new society, new community, different countries, different religions, different colors, language, and everything all together. And, and I, can you imagine I did this while I... I don't remember knowing, you know, I wasn't, my English is still not that perfect, but when I started uh, going to university, few days or at least few weeks for me, it was so hard to understand what I am doing. You know, I was, I was kind of, you know, uh, okay, I decided, I resisted, I did that, I broke that ceiling, I am here. But what now, you know, 
when I I was boarding the plane for first time to India, I wasn't expecting this. For me, that was just, you know, being out of that small conflict of my personal life, especially when I was being attacked by Taliban, uh, online harassments. I'm still going through online harassments and all that. When I was going through that hard, hard times, so it was sometime that I was like, I wish I wasn't, you know, but I'm so happy. I'm so proud of the life I live. I would love to speak a little bit about after university, you came back to Afghanistan and I know you were the youngest mayor at 24. What was the journey to becoming the mayor? And, you know, obviously it was a few years that you were doing that before you fled. Uh, tell, about, tell us about that story. After coming to Afghanistan, I, I told you I started learning about situation when I was at university and then coming to Afghanistan, I wanted to do some practical and something which can help the situation for women. And I knew this, only only this one thing I had in my mind. One day I, I feel like, you know, uh, if I want to give voices voice to women and especially to voiceless women, I need to do something on that. And then I, I, I felt the need of having a radio station, which can be a good platform to give a voice because if you have a radio, everyone without revealing their identity can share their words using that platform. So, so that's, that's how I started, you know, working on that. One of the persons who I knew from early, you know, years, uh, called me and asked me to come to my office because there is someone want to be, you know, partner. That person, after a few days, asked me to partner for the radio station. And now that person is uh, having the honor of being my husband. Uh, and right now he's taking care of my uh, crying baby girl uh, oh. because it's, his, it's her sleep time. But anyways, we started working on that radio station. And after that, I went to youth parliament. And from there, uh, we decided to go to uh, applying for mayorship. So you started applying for, so you looked into mayorship at that point. Yeah, I, I, I went to, you know, despite I didn't want to go to governmental, you know, because I knew how it is. I knew a Pansan situation. I knew the province. After the first examination, uh, no, it was after the announcement of long list candidates for the position, I was seeing these small and big efforts of putting me down by male candidates. Those people talking that Zarifa is not a Muslim lady. Zarifa is just a woo. Zarifa is, uh, Zarifa is having sexual relations with so many boys. Zarifa is not respected lady. Zarifa is, hasn't any self-dignity. She is a foreign agent. Zarifa was everything possible in the world, <laughs> despite being just, just a normal human, a normal, simple human being, a woman who loves to work, who a woman who would just want to be there and, and to work just, to serve, nothing more. When I realized the, this, I feel like, seriously, these guys are doing this because they know I am capable of doing something. So if I am capable of doing something that makes all these efforts, you know, to pay for, for stopping me, then why not to continue? So then that just try, you know, just try was, you know, something like a mission for me. Doesn't matter what, if it's for one day, I want to do it for one day too, you know. So yeah, that's how it started. I got the position, but I started. So wasn't able to join my office because of the, the, the same issues for nine months. There were everyone pushing me, you know, and then pulling me down and telling me, you know, you are not able to make this. Give up. Despite my parents, my dad, my mom, my husband, that I'm, uh, you know, just my friend. Everyone, you know, everyone. But I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not giving up. So many attacks, the road which leaded me into living in exile. 
I'm living in exile because one day I was a mayor who, who was fighting, you know, and who was just a fearless woman. You know, you having that voice and anybody, you should read Zarifa's book. It's amazing. But also watch the documentary, which really talks about your time as the mayor and all of the challenges you had. So you having the courage, the resilience to be able to endure all of those dynamics that were going on with the Taliban and everything. And I know it's got to be hard because your life is calm now. It's a different type of thing. You're not amongst that that chaos that you as a leader were bringing order to and having voice. And so I'm curious, how is this phase of your life going? Current phase of my life is the, 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 the phase I have never expected. I've never thought about it. I had too many possible opportunities to decide about living outside of Afghanistan. Again, the responsibility towards my family, my sibling, uh, and more importantly, after the murder of my dad, I felt like, yeah, I had to put myself at the front so I can give, at least if no one else, three of my sisters a, a new life and a few better future. But nowadays, I am living in Europe. I I am traveling all around Europe into different countries around. I'm traveling to UK, US. And, and I, I, I'm traveling every month, you know, if not uh, more than one, but at least one trip each and every month. Professionally, it helps me uh, to, to be the voice for those who are not in Afghanistan. I am uh, lobbying globally for women's rights in Afghanistan. I'm speaking about international politics. I'm speaking about uh into uh, especially regional politics and uh, uh and then more importantly about women's engagements uh and in peace uh, processes and uh, dialogues that's what i am lecturing i'm speaking about i'm joining panel giving media interviews more and then uh, importantly writing my second book i'm already i already started drafting that uh, it will speak about the life of those of one woman who are living with Molas, with Taliban, and then with Mujahideen and all those uh, warlords. So yeah, this is all what I'm doing. And then uh, this, this life, uh, the only phase of this I love is uh, being with my girl. You really speak to women globally, but of course, women from your country, it's so important to give voice to all the wrongdoings and everything. Sarifa, this is your platform to give a message to women around the world of all ages, of all backgrounds, of all cultures. What do you want to leave them with today? Not giving up despite anything happening around. And then despite anything else, loving yourself, being yourself and exploring the life around you, I feel that makes a human being a pure human being, you know, a human which the world needs it. And more, and then last but not least, I ask everyone to speak about Afghan women. Afghanistan is the only country around the globe where, you know, a huge amount of humanitarian abuse as humanitarian disaster is happening in, in particular into women's lives. So, uh, and then more importantly to those young ladies, to those uh, uh, young women who, who newly trying to step out of their houses and then walk around. Uh, I, I look at you guys uh, the same as myself, despite knowing that maybe the future is uncertain and you don't know what will happen next to you. I, I tell you guys also, pack your bags, just go out, explore it. Doesn't matter what, you know, it will be definitely having good things in its plate for you. Don't afraid of facing new things, exploring good things in your life. And then more importantly, we need to change this entire global perspective of how they look at women, you know. Let's start being leaders. Let's start leading the communities. I, I believe the sooner the world is leaded by women, the so that soon, that easy, we will have a peaceful world, a beautiful world. 
I am so touched. I have goosebumps. I am so honored to have had this conversation with you and to be celebrating you during Women's History Month. Zarifa, you're an incredible woman. Thank you so much for all that you do and for giving voice to women around the world and in, in particular to women from Afghanistan. Thank you. Thank you so much for this conversation. Thanks for listening to Under the Sisterhood. If you haven't already, please give us a quick rating and review on Apple or Spotify. And make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn so you can hear from more amazing women. This podcast is created and hosted by Under the Sisterhood LLC and Elizabeth Elfenbein, produced by Elizabeth Elfenbein and Matt Butler and edited by Matt Butler. The music is by Ayla Schaefer, her song, Rose.